In this video, I'm trying to answer the question, what constitutes as good education? When I first, well, I posed this question myself, what comes to my mind first is that I attend teacher's college, and I think that's representative enough of what's good education based on teacher's college, tuition cost, reputation, and history, I feel whatever I learn in there is good education. Now, I'm trying to um, answer this question. And I typically have a representative, a typical population when someone says teacher and what education involves, I would specify my population as the elementary to middle school kids. I would say a typical, yeah, for this purpose, what's representative. Um, and I will talk about public education in America because that's my own experience, how I got through education. And, um, but right now in this century, we're just talking about modern schooling education. It's not easy or possible to go back in time and to where everything started from Socrates to Plato to Aristotle. All right, the first, um, the first of the four things I, f I wanna answer this question is, um, all right, here's the list. School, teacher, curriculum, pedagogy. When all four of these are right, we have a good education. School in my, um, school in my opinion is the physical location, the management, basically that's what it is. And now that America has 300 years of history, it's pretty grounded and set. Our schooling system came from Europe. We adopted the British education system, and we have an idea of what teachers are, what students are, what is a classroom. Um, school is not about the money. It's not about a poor school, a low and resource school. I say the poor it is with efficient management and um, planning and um, carrying the teaching out, it, we still can get quality, good, efficient education. What we eliminate is the distraction part and um, better management. From what I know, talking about um, talking to current teachers, they complain about not having enough time to teach, saying the lessons weren't carried out like smoothly there were distractions all the time from breaking up fights to sending students to the office, referrals. So we do not want teachers to every day call the janitor. Someone threw up, someone vomited, someone is bleeding, we're missing this, we need a psychologist, someone's acting up. These are distractions and impedes learning. So the learning environment is crucial. The teacher herself is the sole responsibility of the classroom. I would say she's in full control and she has responsibility for the classroom. The school, the building, all the other administration, they're a supplement to teaching. What goes on in the classroom is what the teacher should do from carrying out the plan, lesson planning, and meeting goals. When I say I specify uh, population students from elementary to middle school, there is a goal in mind. Um, students come to school with a purpose for a goal. So in this case, teachers promote graduation towards middle school and eventually moving on to high school. Now the teacher training part, number two. Teacher. Teacher training, of course, is necessary. Um, I, s I see a balance there about teachers. One thing is they can't be your friends. They, they can't be people you want to play with and socialize and see as your peers. So um, 
they should be they can be friendly caring they'll they'll be there for you for your students when they need you but they're not your playmates they shouldn't be threatening or very coercive like that that kind of attitude like dictatorship and um, so they need to teach the students must respect her but she cannot treat them like friends or their daughters so that that's a delicate balance of the attitude how the teacher and students interact with each other um, and teaching most importantly is I would say is about especially for that population is to grow and develop so the more important is to teach them to be curious and open and have a loving accepting attitude of learning the more you teach them the more they want to learn still in them that motivation and they'll perpetuate them more in the future if they have that will that they will continue learning and graduate on time and meet their goals in life therefore um, no matter what subject I think it's not as important to know your stuff and be the knowledgeable in the subject you're teaching but to let your students harbor that love that passion for learning um, the third part <coughs> third part, curriculum, could get controversial in this section. First of all, I don't believe in restrictions and constraints about what they're not allowed to learn about things, not allowed to be said in the classroom. Um, freedom is freedom. You can learn, you can think your own ideas. I don't believe in forcing them and restricting them to be thinking in a certain way. What's not allowed is don't let your students go bad. Things that shouldn't be in the classroom shouldn't be there. Bad words, profanity, crime, graphic, gruesome things. Don't give students the idea that these inappropriate and cruel things are allowed in school, that they'll get that idea. It's okay to talk about anything no matter how bad it's allowed in school. That is absolutely not. You do not train your students to become criminals. They can think about controversial things, debating in politics, religion just don't want them to go bad and have an idea it's okay to be an immoral person um, curriculum no matter what it uh, you need to teach them stuff they can use in the future that will be useful for them so trends in politics elections coming up current events worldwide current events societal trends something for their near future so what they learn is actually a connection of what their life will be and their connection to the world so they they know the purpose of what they're learning um you can yes and and be clear with their parents communicate with them so you're teaching them one thing and you're aware of their parents attitudes too on certain subjects and how you say one thing in the classroom and the parents it's like if they oppose you refute you or even just attack you saying teachers are awful they're not supposed to talk like that or the American school system is horrible know what's going on at home to talk with their parents communicate in and curriculum curriculum um, I think every teacher should have her style so I promote to be fun and interesting and keep the environment lively so everyone is interested and pretty enthusiastic and want to be in the classroom. I love it to be fun and playing, having a good time in the classroom and learning that way. Now the fourth thing about a good education is pedagogy, yes. My my last thing on the list. Well, I attended. It's it's different. It's it's different for every teacher. I attended school in China before, and students are supposed to put their hands back behind their hand and sit like this and be like obedient dummies. If you're not given permission to talk or participate, you're not even allowed to raise your hand and ask questions. Just sit like this, upright with hands behind your back, and the teacher just lectures, lectures, lectures. Now, there's different pedagogies. 
being practiced worldwide. There's the teacher-centered pedagogy, which is pretty much the teacher just lectures, and he or she has the full power to allow you to have a conversation, small groups, or ask questions. And there's the student-centered pedagogy, where education is revolving and individualized on the students. So um, the instructor lets the student lead the learning and shape teaching around them. And there's mixed methods like learning together with a group so students can influence and teach each other and the teacher just acts as a moderator or facilitator. Now, pedagogy, um, what, what I think is most important is to have the whole class engaged in what they're learning. The other thing is the focus. You're there meeting the goals in the end. Um, mm, oh, yes. Since I specified these kids, they're, they're a little bigger. They're like tweens, teens, in like 10, 11, that age range. I would consult a lot with um, psychologists or behaviorists so we know with that age, aside from what we teach them in the books, be aware of their physical, biologic development, their cognitive development, and other things going on for children that age range. So we know fully how they think, how the body develops, and if that's efficient for them to learn. That's about it, the four ways I answer um, my question, what constitutes as good education, as at least in this society, in America, in this age. Um, I do oppose greatly that the idea of Rancier and Hooks be used on these little, little ones, the teenagers. So we still need to guide them, we still need to monitor little, little kids. We can't just let them have the full freedom to transgress or act like whatever Rancier said, that the schoolmaster is supposed to just play the role of you owe me intelligence. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm smart, you're stupid, and you have to cut open your brain and pour knowledge on be little, little ones. Um, so today what remains is just a fantasy of what would it be like if I can go back to Plato's time. It's a fantasy now. And I chose this topic to do the video because we've all been students, we've all been there that age, being little teenagers, graduating elementary to middle school. So I think we can all relate to that. And now um, we're just officially saying goodbye. Thank you for watching. I hope I did learn a lot and I miss you guys all. Now, take care. Thank you for watching my presentation.